This video was brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Welcome to BCH 4024, Introduction to Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. My name is Philip Lapis. I'm professor of biochemistry and molecular biology. I'm the associate chair of the department, and I'm also the course coordinator. I'm the person you want to talk to if you have questions or problems with the scheduling or organization of the class, if you have problems with grades, if you're having trouble in the course. Talk to me. All right? To talk to me, you want to email me at plapus at ufl.edu. I really don't accept phone calls. If you email me, we both know when you made the contact, when I responded, and at least a little bit of what the discussion was about. If we need to talk at greater length than can be done in an email, I'll schedule a time where we can both sit in my office. All right. But for most questions, start it by email, emailing me at plapus at ufl.edu. If you use Sakai email, be sure to check the send to recipients email box. All right? I don't check Sakai email routinely. So if you send it there and don't check this box, I may not see your email for several days. Otherwise, you'll get an answer within 24 hours and usually much faster. BCH 4024 surveys structure, function, and metabolism plus molecular biology. It is a pre-professional level course that is in general a requirement for almost all professional careers and graduate school in the life sciences. The faculty that teach this course are all tenured faculty in the department. Many of them have research programs. And all of them teach in professional level courses in the College of Medicine, Dentistry, Veterinary Medicine, or in the graduate school. So the faculty that are teaching this course know what's in re required for subsequent professional or graduate education. If you have a problem with the material, the f teaching faculty are the people to talk to. You can talk to me, and if it's about molecular biology, I can answer it. But otherwise, talk to me about organization, talk to the faculty lecturers about the material. Lectures. The course meets four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. There are two sections, so fourth period, 1040, sixth period at 1250. The lectures are identical. You may have signed up for one or the other. You may come to whichever is easier for you to attend. There should be no difference between the lecture given at 1040 and the lecture at 1250. Lectures are in the Stetson Medical Auditorium. It's in the Medical Science Building, room N2200. There are directions to this room on the Sakai website, which we'll talk about shortly. Another regularly scheduled event is walk-in help sessions. I'll say more about these later. But immediately after each class day, in the adjacent building, the Academic Research Building, R3206, at the fifth period, between these two, and at the seventh period, after this lecture, there is a walk-in tutor who is available to answer questions about not only the, current, the lecture that was just presented, but material from other lectures. These are also students who have taken the course previously and know the material. All right, I'll say more about this later. 
we have a textbook. It's Leninger's Principle of Bi Biochemistry. It's the fifth edition, 2008. The textbook is highly recommended. It is not absolutely required. All right? There are textbooks, new copies in the Health Science Center bookstore uh, on the ground floor. There are a few copies on reserve in the library, and I know there are a lot of used copies. This book is being replaced by the sixth edition. We're not using it this semester. We will use it in the spring. If you want to buy that, fine. If uh, you're taking this course because you're interested in a graduate career in the life sciences, you may want to consider, instead of Leninger's book, Biochemistry by Voet and Voet. That's a prof professional level textbook. It goes into much greater detail. It will serve you well in future graduate studies as well as being as good as Leninger in, in this course. Ask me more about that if you're interested in an email. The course syllabus and a couple of files explaining policies on grading and tests and so on are available on the Sakai e-learning site. Old exams, some test answers for those exams are also available on the course site on Sakai. So here's the URL for Sakai. Exam sign up is also done online. Here's the URL for exam sign up and to see what your test grades are after the exam, this URL. All right, I'm putting these here on the front page of this announcement. This will remain on the Sakai website as well, so you'll have an easy reference to where exam signups are and where grades are available. The faculty that teach this course have put, put a fair amount of time into writing lecture notes that emphasize the topics they think are most important. These lecture notes are available only on the Sakai website. They use figures from the textbook, they use the faculty's own figures, and they may use, in a few instances, other material which is also copyrighted. So that has to be on the Sakai website. There is no approved commercially produced course package. I will also note that the lecture notes change We've been reorganizing the course, and older notes are not exactly applicable to what will be taught this fall. Okay, so lecture notes on the website. Exams and grades. There are four examinations on the course, September 19th, October 18th, November 15th, and December 8th. These exams are in CG28, the Health Science Center Computer Test Center. Right? That's the only exam location. This is in the Communicore building. Before the first exam, I will lead a hike from MSB Auditorium to CG28 so that you all know where it is. Okay, there's so many students in the class that exams are given at four different times. In general, those are 2, 3.45, 5.30, and 7.15. There's a couple of minor variations, and those are noted in the syllabus. The exams are 90 minute long, and they are 50 two-point multiple choice questions. Think about your schedule and think about your other commitments. If you are going to have a conflict, especially a repeating conflict with an exam or the exam time, then I suggest you drop the course right now. A continuing conflict with the times and the exam days is going to make it impossible for you to proceed in the course. However, we fully understand that students may have to miss one exam, a death in the family, 
severe illness, a car accident, whatever. All right? I will schedule a makeup exam for November 27th for students who miss one of these first three exams. There is no makeup for the final. You have to be there. I will also require written documentation for any missed exam. So I'll want to see a funeral notice, an arrest report, or a letter from your doctor. I have a template which I will accept the plain form that the student infirmary provides is not acceptable. If you are sick, email me and tell me and I'll send you a template for your medical provider to sign. Okay. Obviously, there's one exam one makeup exam, so you can't miss more than one exam. And there is no scheduled makeup for the final. Let me emphasize, you really don't want to take the makeup. The makeup is no more difficult than the exam you have missed. One of the nice things about multiple choice exams is I can tell how hard an exam is and then a makeup can be created that is of equal difficulty. However, when you're taking the makeup, you'll be in the middle of also studying for molecular biology and you'll be weeks or months from the material that is covered in the makeup. Students who take the makeup routinely do at least five points and often 10 or more points worse on the makeup than in their average on the exams they took at the appropriate times. They also tend to do worse on the final because they're trying to study for what they missed at the same time that we're going through molecular biology. If you can at all avoid it, do not take the makeup. If this is going to be a problem with you, I, again, I suggest dropping the course. Take it again at a time when your schedule allows you to make the exam dates. Okay, that's exams. Grades. Your final letter grade is determined solely on the basis of your rank in the class. And that rank is determined by the sum of the scores on the four exams. So the only people who count are those that have taken all four exams. Students who drop the course do not count in setting the grade curve. There's a complete description of the exams, the makeup options, and the grading criteria on the Sakai site. But in brief, students who score on all four exams is equal to or higher than the median, not the average, the median score of all students who complete the course, who have taken all four exams. Those students will receive a B or higher grade. If the median is 280, that is the lowest B. A 278 is a B minus, all right? Students whose score is below the median will receive a B minus or lower grade. And as I said, historically, the median for all four exams is somewhere around 280 points, about 70% overall score. Okay, if you're in the upper half of the class, you'll get a B or better grade. If you're in the lower half, you'll get a B minus or a lower grade. Is that clear? Don't ask me what the cutoffs for A, A minus, B plus are. I don't know. They depend upon the rank of students who took exams. I won't know that. I won't know how many students are at each grade until the final is over. There are 700 students and there will be three or four or more students at almost every possible grade. Okay? I don't know. All right, so median and above 
top half of the class and you'll get a B. What about below? There's one more absolute. Students who score on all four exams is 55%, average is 55%. That's 220 points out of 400. Will receive, guaranteed to receive a C or somewhere in between, between C, C plus, B minus, okay? There's one modification to that, and that is if the class average of the four exams minus one standard deviation is lower than 220, let's say the class average turns out to be 54 percent or 216, all right, I will lower the cutoff for a C grade to the average minus one standard deviation. If it is 55 percent and you have 220, you get a C. If you have 218, you get a C minus or lower. Okay? So a 220 or above guaranteed C, 220, 218 or below is a C minus unless the class average minus one standard deviation is below that grade. Students who score two standard deviations below the class average will get either a D minus or an E. Four hundred two four is a preparatory course for professional school or for graduate school. It's a difficult course but it is not impossible. If you have good study habits, the course will be hard, but you won't have too much trouble. If you don't have good study habits, now's a good time to learn. All right, you can ask me, again, email me at plapus at ufl.edu. It's helpful if you put your UFID in any email, because if it's a question about grades, it makes it easy for me to find you. If you're emailing from a Gmail account or some other non-UF email account, also put your UF, your UF email in. I will reply to that email. This is an official communication from the university, all right? So email me and give me enough information so that I can easily find you and respond appropriately to whatever you are asking. Okay, it's difficult but not impossible. What are some suggestions? I.e., how am I gonna get a good grade in 4024? Well, you're gonna have to go to every class and you're gonna have to listen. Sitting in class and reading your email or updating your Facebook page is probably not going to work, all right? It's helpful if you look at the lecture notes or even study them before the lecture and then take your own notes during the lecture to supplement what's in these notes and highlight questions or areas that bother you. This is probably the most important thing you can do come to class, listen, and take notes. There are reading assignments in the textbook. Read them. Use it to clarify lecture material that you didn't understand. If you don't understand the lecture, look at the notes, look at the text, then go and talk to the lecturer and understand what was said. Lecturers may at their discretion, ask questions based on assigned reading. Okay, so they may tell you to read a section of the book and then there may be a test question on it. That may not be in the notes. It may be stated in class. I've already talked about this. Don't miss exams. If you do, be prepared to study much harder than you have been or you really will be disappointed in the results. 
this should be obvious, you have to keep up. Students that try and cram in the last week for this course are going to be pushing that C limit. Do not fall behind in your studying. There's simply too much material in too many different areas to try and cram it all. It won't work. Keep up. Okay, we have learned some other things that help students. And so, a year ago, we instituted supplemental instruction, small peer group teaching. There will be scheduled supplemental instruction sessions each week. Students who have previously taken the course and have been interviewed and screened will teach these small group help sessions. They did well in the class. We've talked to them. They can communicate. They have teaching ability. And they will be in class along with you. So they will know exactly what you're hearing at the same time. All right? You can sign up for SI sessions. The sign up uh, will begin at the end of this week. And there'll be more information about that shortly. In addition to these small groups, we also have the walk-ins, the walk-in tutors, as I said, immediately after each class session on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And at Broward Hall, other selected undergraduates who have been screened, again, can serve as private tutors. And you can sign up for a private tutor whom you will meet once a week to go over material with you. Okay, this is tutors for last fall. I obviously don't have tutors for this fall, uh, pictures for this fall yet. So, in summary, go to class, do the reading, take notes, don't miss exams, go to office hours and SI sessions or walk ins, and keep up with the material. Don't let it pile up to the end. Okay, good luck. Study hard. I will be seeing all of you at the exams and probably many of you in my office.